Hey this is Ori from AstroWeb and I'm going to show you some of the important SEO settings for Magenta 2 websites. Um, so first thing you want to do before you touch any settings is of course you want to set up, <clears throat> do your research, set up a, your keyword list, figure out what you're trying to target, what you're trying to do. Um, once you know that you're going to be able to use that, especially in the product content and category configuration, um, and title tags and things like that, you're going to have to use it. So know that before you do any kind of settings and think about it in detail. Um, so let's, let's start with some of the tips, okay? So uh, when you go to stores in the back end and configuration, you have all of your tabs here. So I'm going to go one by one on the important ones. Number one is in general and web, you're going to go to the auto redirect to base URL and make sure you 301 redirect your uh, non www to ww or opposite depending on what your final url is going to be um, this is just a test uh, url so it's kind of different but uh, for example twitter.com doesn't use www and they redirect www to non so uh, you're going to want to do that most websites use ww so make sure you use the 301 redirect so there's no uh, duplicate there's no potential duplicate uh, subdomains okay so that's number one uh, also, use web server rewrites, yes. So you don't want to have a .php, question mark, equals, etc. You want to have clean, clean URLs. Okay, great. Um, next one is, if you can, you want to try to have your entire site, both your base URL and your secure, all on HTTPS, if possible. Um, now, um, it, it's not required uh, for necessarily for security but there are a few benefits to it so number one it's easier to not have mixed content issues so uh, issues where you're loading a HTTPS site but some of your elements load in HTTP number two is if you um, use all HTTPS you will get in Google Analytics more uh, data on your keywords because um, the uh, transferring from HTTP HTTPS websites to your HTTPS will give you more header information and uh, you potentially get more Google Analytics keywords. Um, so that's a good thing. Now in addition, uh, Google has mentioned that they have slight additions or slight favor for HTTPS websites. So that could be a good thing. Um, okay, so th those are for the URLs themselves. Uh, let's go to the next configuration. Okay, so in general and design you have settings for your default ro robots meta tags so of course if it's a live site you want to make sure it's on index and follow and if it's a development website for example maybe you have a development and a live site make sure development websites are no index no follow you don't want to index your development site in addition to your site and then have duplicate content uh, the next thing is you can set the actual robots.txt uh, file in the root directory from the back end right here. So you're going to want to put uh, which user agents you want, what do you want to allow, what do you want to disallow, and mention where the sitemap URL is. Okay, great. <clears throat> Next thing, um, if you go to catalog and catalog, you'll be able to set this products field auto generation. So basically the, the SEO title tag, the meta keywords, and meta description can get automa automatically pro propagated uh, from your uh, product names and this will help you speed up things especially for a uh, large volume of uh, products of SKUs. Okay? Great. Um, next one. The Let's see. Uh, next one. A product reviews. Um, so the more content you can have on your website the more potential it would be good for your customers and search engines can read a lot of extra content and wording and descriptions on your site so uh, depending if you want to allow guests to write or uh, actual customers that have logged in uh, this is an important setting to look at okay great um, next one image placeholders make sure you actually have a default image just in case you didn't upload images okay great uh, next one search engine optimization so a uh, few things. So number one is you would you want to make sure that you have a consistent URL base. So if you're always using .html at the end or non, you want to use that. Next thing is um, use categories path for product URLs. So if you go to the front end, for example, the URL at after the domain will be just for example the 
uh, product name, so vans da 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 html. Now, if you set that to on, let's go back here. If you set that to on, then in addition, your URL will get longer and you'll have the category name. So for example, slash shoes slash vans. So um, you want to be consistent in the way you actually set up your your URLs. And you want to know it, what kind of URLs uh, customers are expecting and the website is expecting. And so the example for this is if if you one of the considerations are if you have a product for example these van shoes you have them in multiple categories let's say shoes and you have them in the vans so when a customer goes through the funnel goes from the home page to let's say the shoes category the URL will be slash shoes slash vans dot, 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 dot HTML but if the customer goes to the same shoes through let's say uh, sale then uh, sale category then the URL will be slash sale slash the product name dot HTML so what that means is now you're having multiple pages that could put that potentially that do have the same content and so you might have issues with duplicate content so in this case you want to consider two other things number one is either you can use the canonical tag right here okay so use the canonical tag for products and categories um, or you can make your own of course that will involve some coding or you can turn the use category path for product URLs to no that means the URL will always be clean doesn't matter where the user came from the URL will always be consistent and one URL so you don't have uh, duplicate content okay now they so that's turning it to no is the easy way to avoid duplicate content but sometimes for users uh, you want to actually have a, a different longer URL with the category so it's up to you as long as you use canonicals and you know what you're doing uh, both settings can be good okay great um, so let's see what we have right here okay and that is it for this page okay so next one uh, catalog XML sitemap here you're gonna set up the settings on when to auto generate or when to refresh the sitemap uh, which is a very important thing so if you if you refresh your catalog or you add products on a weekly basis you can change it to a weekly basis okay and the next one is to actually create limits of maximum number of URLs per file so if you have a very large catalog you want to split this correctly okay great um, next one okay so if you go to the advanced um, you can actually input your information to Google Analytics and you can also use a Google AdWords a, a conversion tagging now this is less for SEO but it will help you for your efforts okay great um, next one okay a, okay so actually th this this is not needed so um, la last thing uh, this this is all for settings itself so once you finish the settings and you know what you're doing now you actually have to go and, and manage your content in your products and your catalog so how do you do that so first of all in order to manage a specific page maybe the home page or contact page or any other page you're gonna go to content contact and pages and you're gonna edit a page and use the very simple title tag and then med meta information so let's say we edit this home page right here so let's edit right there okay great so first of all you have your page title and then here you have the very standard search engine optimization URL title tag meta keywords meta description so you're gonna wanna fill this in correctly with the specific uh, information related to your products your in information of that page and of course your, the keywords you're trying to target okay very very simple stuff um, of course in the content itself you're gonna want to use uh, the correct wording uh, use alt tags use images correctly and just make make uh, use just the standard SEO best practices in order to portray your information correctly to users and of course the search engines okay so the same thing applies to the categories in the catalog you have the title tag meta description etc everything's gonna be in this search engine optimization area right here okay now um, for a better interlinking and, and more emphasis on certain pages you always want to make sure they're in the menu they're easily found that you can find you can they're linked to from the most important pages etc all of the, the standard uh, best SEO practices 
okay? And then, so once you finish that, there's two more things remaining. So uh, the, the before last thing is related to coding, but you always wanna make sure that your code is, is clean and especially has uh, microdata. So it has defined tagging to specify what a product is, what a review is, um, and uh, what a category is, and, and etc. and your business name and all of that. So you wanna go to, uh, refer to Google's documentation on a uh, rich snippets or microdata. You wanna make sure you code that or your developer codes that correctly. And then you also want to uh, basically go and use the testing tool, microdata, and test it out, okay? So you wanna, you wanna test out a, how your page is, how your HTML shows it. So you're gonna go to this tool, search Google, structure data, put in your URL, and, be, and make sure that you have the correct microdata set up. Okay, great. So the last thing I wanna talk about is a speed optimization. So one of the things that help for SEO is make your website fast. If your website is fast, your users are happy, and Google and the search engines will send your users there. Okay, great. So um, what, do you, what can we do in order to speed up the website? So aside from all the hosting and technical things you can set up, which are extremely, extremely important, uh, what you wanna do is number one, upload images with the smallest file size that you can. So a, make sure you optimize, you lossless compress, and then only then you upload your, your product images to the site. Uh, of course, that includes logos and other images, the social media icons, etc. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, you want to use a let's say all of the settings. You want to make sure that you have re-indexed, refresh your database. You um, re-index the d database. You set up. You configured and. You run your, your website with tools just like, uh, for example, GT Metrics, um, and you want to see what are the things that are slowing down your, your server. So let's, let's do a quick search right here. Let's look at it. Okay. You want to make sure, uh, in the meantime, uh, some of the most popular things are caching, for example. So in addition to Magento caching, you can, on your web server, add some more caching to uh, make sure that you users browsers maintain your images and your JavaScript and your CSS for as long as possible a of course for as long as, as you think possible unless you're refreshing your content or you know changing your code fairly regularly so you want to make sure you do that so while it's running let's let's lay let's look at what's happening okay great so you can use this tool to see how you can, for example, uh, leverage browser caching, which we talked about. Make sure you gzip all of the G CSS, JavaScript, and HTML, um, and many, many other things. So you can look here and get some examples, and make your website faster. Use flat catalogs and flat products, for example. Make sure you index, make sure um, you just do the best practices. So if you want more ideas on specific things that you can help with, we'll create more videos to do so, and you can always ask in the videos, and I'll be very, very happy to help. Uh, hope this helped. Thank you.